Well, good afternoon. Uh, today's topic on Fridays with Feldman is Perthes disease, or leg calf Perthes disease. This is a, uh, a disorder that really is not a disease per se, but a condition that affects the hip of children. Um, it basically is the blood supply to, to the hip uh, goes away, almost like a heart attack of the muscle of the heart. You get a, a heart attack of the hip or of the, ca the capital femoral epiphysis, which in English is the top of the hip bone. And so Perthes disease per se, having the blood supply go away from the, from the hip joint, causes it to collapse. And, and so what are our goals? When we want to see a child with Perthes disease, what should our goal be? Or what should the patient's goal be? Well, we want to keep the femoral head, the top of the femur bone, round. And we call that spherical. We want to keep it shaped like the, the, the cup, which is the acetabulum, and that's called congruent. So we want to keep it spherical and congruent. And we basically can trade off different things in order to achieve that. So perhaps the anatomy of the hip will be distorted by treating it a little bit, but as long as we keep the hip normal and we keep it round, then we know down the road we're gonna be fine. Well, how do we obtain that? How do we basically take a child and, and allow them, after they've had a hip that dies, to come alive again and stay around? Well, there's so many ways. Exercise, physical therapy is the mainstay of treatment, but that really is for the younger child, perhaps below the age of eight, but we're below the age of six, doesn't have terrible disease, and we start with physical therapy. And we can, we can brace and cast, and again, depending upon how long the child wants to stay in the cast, there are people in St. Louis, for instance, Dr. Schenecker, who believes that you can cast almost anybody for a very long period of time. That certainly falls away when you have kids who are older, 9, 10, 11 years old. Putting them in a cast for a couple of years may not be the easiest thing in the world, and certainly the results are not... Uh, incredible if you have an older child. And the older the child did with Perthes disease, the worse it is. But certainly the use of casting and bracing needs to be part of, our, we'll call it our armamentarium, what we utilize in treating Perthes. And then we can drill. We can actually bring it back to life again. We drill or we core decompress, you're going to hear that word, where we drill out um, the femoral head. And then and these are all three. These three are very, very minimally invasive and really not very aggressive treatments for Perthes. But all of a sudden you've gone from non-surgical and then you're moving down to surgical management. Then you get into much more surgical management. And that's when we start breaking the femur bone, what's called a varus osteotomy. We can deepen the socket of the joint. That's called an acetabular osteotomy. And then we can do distraction of the joint, and that's called an arthrodiastasis, where we unload the hip while it's healing to allow it to heal while it is undergoing its natural healing process. So we allow it to heal round while it's naturally healing. And then are there any drugs or, or medications that we can use to stimulate it to healing? Well, maybe we can use things like, I wrote down here, Zomita, which is zoandronic acid, and that selectively turns off the cells that eat up the bone, and maybe that, that makes it heal quicker. Or we can inject something called bone morphogenic protein, which stimulates the bone cells to heal much quicker. So we would like to do that too. So you have all these things. All these things are in need to be part of the treatment of this disease. And this was described way back when, to perhaps to break the bone back in 1965, um, with a, with a surgeon who used to work in the place that I used to work in in New York at a hospital for joint diseases. He worked there and he described this for every child who had Perthes disease to break the bone of the femur. And there are people who still do that. Dr. Ben Joseph in India, India he, 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 he is attributed with this and does it for almost every child who's early on. And he'll break the femur bone so that we can restore the anatomy of the hip and we can get the hip to be rounder while it heals. And then we can describe, and maybe Dr. Herring described whether or not it collapses a lot, and that may be the time when we have to go ahead and do surgery for it. And I've done that for years and years. You know, this is an operation I did, this is 13 years ago, this child, an eight-year-old with Perthes disease, and you can see the head has collapsed and is no longer round. And this is in the operating room, we're injecting dye to see that the head is starting to collapse and there's more dye, and I broke the head, I broke the, 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 I'm sorry, the femur bone, placed the plate in until the bone heals, and allowed the head to be deeper in the socket, and the bone healed round. And this is years later, and the child did quite well. 
with a round hip for years and years. Same with a seven-year-old with Perthes disease, normal hip, abnormal hip. And again, you can uh, break the femur bone and it makes it, and it heals much rounder than it did before. And that is an option for children. That's called the varus osteotomy. And I still utilize that at times for the right case. And I'm just showing you various examples and we don't have to belabor the point, but that's how you do, excuse me, a varus osteotomy for Perthes disease. Now let's say that's not gonna make it round enough. You can add the acetabulum. You could deepen the socket of the joint. And that's actually more, that's very commonly done from, in my practice where I can use this both in the early treatment and in the late treatment to restore it. So just to show you how it can be utilized, here's a 16-year-old who had Perthes disease and it healed with a, with a non-round head. Well, I made the head round. I did what's called a femoral head reduction osteotomy. I made the head round. I then deepened the socket with what's called a periacetabular osteotomy. So now the head is round and the socket is deep, so she has a normal hip. And then I lengthened her because her leg was short on this side because the growth plate was affected. And I lengthened her leg with a rod. So there's all three options. Again, you can lengthen a leg, you can deepen the socket, you can, I can actually make the head round when it once wasn't round. But that girl is 16, not six. So again, you have to take the age of the child, what stage of the disease we're in, and how we're going to treat this disease. And there it is with a lengthening rod after I lengthened her. And so then sometimes we have children who present, let's say, at an older age, 9, 10, 11 years old, or even younger, but the hip is not amenable to breaking the bone and making it round. It doesn't want to become round. It's just too small. Putting, breaking the femoral bone won't do anything for it. And then it often times in those cases, in this patient, for instance, we can do a distraction of the hip. So we take a hip, there's an older child, almost 12 years old, who just got Perthes disease, it's collapsed, and we can put a device on that, that, that takes the pressure off the hip while it heals. I would probably drill it at the same time, and then basically let it heal with distraction. And here's two years after the hip is done, and here's 10 years after the hip. So this patient has a round hip from a hip that really started out quite poorly, and this patient is now 22 years old. So we've, we've taken distraction as also part of it. In distraction, people, re people wear a device. And the advantage of that is we're not breaking the bone. I'm not changing the shape of the bone of the, of the femur or of the cup of the acetabulum. And here's a young boy who had a distraction just to show you what can happen afterwards. And he was 12 years old when he had the distraction. And just to show you that here was, I think it was his first day skating. And just to show you that you can function really well afterwards. And then he's practicing, and then he's playing and scoring a goal. So basically, even with hockey, which is pretty high pressure on the knees and the hips, if you've created a round hip that's healed after Perthes disease, you can do all sports. You can play and really have a normal hip. So I think what we need to take home message from today's uh, Fridays with Feldman is that Perthes disease is complicated. You're going to get 20 opinions and 20 different opinions from 20 different doctors about how to treat it. And I think that the message is that it needs to be that you have all these things available to you, that you have good therapists who can treat you. And that should be the first line of defense, obviously, if it's a younger child. Perhaps casting, perhaps bracing, and that's all you need, and you can end up with a normal result. Perhaps you're going to break the femur. Perhaps you're going to deepen the socket of the joint. Perhaps you're going to reduce the size of the femoral head and make it round again. Or maybe you're going to distract the joint with an external fixator. And, and maybe you're going to use medicines such as bone morphogenic protein or Zomita. But it all has to be available. Because if you just treat it one way, it's going to fail. You're not going to be able to say, I only do femoral osteotomies and they all do well. I only do distraction and they all do well. Because everything needs to get a good result in Perthes, which is not easy in an older patient. You need to have all of it available to you so that we can have a result that ends up in a, in a child who can play hockey normally afterwards um, after suffering from per Perthes disease. So I think you combine these medical, you combine therapeutic, you combine surgical when needed to treat a disease that isn't always surgical, but maybe at the end. And so um, each one of these should be looked at separately, and each child has to be viewed separately 
when we think about how we're going to treat this. So that's really, I mean, Perthes, which is a complicated disease in summary. And I guess I'll take some questions from people um, on Facebook and try to hopefully make some sense out of all the different things people hear when they hear about Perthes disease. Yes, we have, um, we have a few shout outs. Um, Amelia Machnan says that you are the best, Dr. Feldman. <laughs> <Okay. Great. laughs> um, Sarah Hurt says that Aubrey can't wait to meet you next Thursday. <laughs> okay. And uh, Kat Beal says hello from the Beal family. <laughs> okay. So I think any that's, questions? I don't us? think we have any questions at the moment. So I think the question, just so I answer one question, I think the question people should ask is I went to the doctor and he said I should do blank. I think your question to that surgeon should be do you do. Do you do more than that? Do you, how, do, you, how, do you treat all children with that? Or is there different ways that you treat it? And if there's experience with all these different modalities, then I think that you're going ahead and approaching Perthes in a manner. It's a matter of managing it, not just, um, not just operating in one manner that you always do this or you always do that. So we do have one question. Victor Lan just asked, in a young patient, tenotomy plus spica, question mark. Yeah, so I think again, so now you have a child under the age of six perhaps, whose surgery is on, is usually does not need it, but sometimes those children need to be treated in bracing or casting, and sometimes you do soft tissue release to make it a little bit wider, and certainly that is a good, and then go back to therapy again, and that is a good way to treat you know that disease. So yes, I think that is one, casting tenotomy is one modality, is one treatment modality for Perthes that is sometimes used for young children. All right. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Friday, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.